Hola muchachos, welcome here. I previously did a video talking about things I do not let my kids do. Hold on, I was eating a cookie. Oh, nothing in my teeth, okay. And you guys seem to really like that video and I did it with the intention of doing this video as well, talking about things that I do let my kids do. Every parent is different because children are different and families and how they function are different. So don't watch this video and be like, you need to let your kids do these things or vice versa with the other video. You need to not let your kids do these things. But this is just kind of like a fun video for me to do. I love talking about my kids. I love talking about being a mom. I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old and a two-year-old and baby number four due in August. So I'm in like full on mom mode. And I just wanna share some things that I let my kids do. If you don't let your kids do these things, you're still a sweet parent and no shame. I hope that I can like properly explain myself here. Uh, as we go through every single point. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I let my kids do, I let my kids cry and I let my kids show emotion. Uh, I know there's so many parents and trust me, I struggle with this too. Some days crying can be a lot, just crying. Crying. And and I and I feel that and I feel you and we can naturally want to be like you're okay You're fine. Everything's okay when we need to stop Suppressing kids and their emotions and how they're feeling but actually figure out why are you sad? Let's talk about that a little bit deeper and then maybe from there you can give them reassurance of their emotions But also kind of guide them towards calming down feeling better, but I think like our first like thought when we hear our kids cry is you're fine stop crying and instead of that our kids actually need some recognition on how they are emotionally kids don't wake up and just are like I'm gonna bug mom today and I'm gonna cry and I'm gonna tantrum and I'm gonna make her go crazy like not many three-year-olds think like that when our kids are emotional there's a reason for it and we need to talk them through it and figure out why they're feeling like this uh, it gives us huge insight insights to how our kids cope with certain things and how they deal with things. And then you can also give them tools on how to deal with their emotions instead of just suppressing them and smothering them and being like, you're fine, you're fine. Even if your kid is fine, try to get to the heart of the matter and see what is making them sad or tantrum or cry or upset. This is so important and I'm preaching to myself too. This whole time, preaching to myself too. Number two, I let my kids dress themselves. When my kids need a clothing change, I am not responsible for that. My kids are responsible for that. Uh, I will still say it's time to get into your day clothes, it's time to get into your jammies, and they follow through, but I put that in their hands. So I make sure that all of their clothing is easy for them to access. So if they need socks or they need some day clothes or jammies, they have the ability to go and do that. I am huge, huge into raising independent children. Uh, and that goes with their shoes and their jackets. Everything that they need is at their level and they can reach it. Uh, it's very beneficial to me because it's one less thing that I have to do. And then for them, it's just teaching them how to dress themselves, how to get ready, how to prepare. And at the same time, little kids really do love having responsibilities and tasks that they are in charge of. So I love letting my kids dress themselves. They dress themselves every single day. It's awesome. Number three. <laughs> Number three. So I grew up with a sick mom who always let me do seriously what I wanted to my room. When I was little, I was allowed all my artwork on the walls. We were allowed colorful bunk beds and colorful bedding. We were allowed to paint the walls crazy colors. Like it was really cool. We had a really relaxed mom when it came to how we did our space. She wanted it to be clean and tidy. Sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. But when it came to just how it looked and how we set it up, it was on us. And that was actually really cool and I love giving that to my kids and I know <laughs> I know in today's day and age there's this huge I have a cute Pinterest worthy children's bedroom and I'm not knocking it I'm not knocking it but I think if you are designing your kids room to your personality what you like I don't <laughs> 
I don't want to offend anyone, but I personally think that's really weird because it's not your space. That's your kid's space. So I love giving my kids the ability to do whatever really in their space. They have colorful bedding, they have artwork on the walls, they have cool lights, they have mismatched patterns, but it's their rooms and it's very much them. So I really like letting my kids do what they like in their own space. I think it's beautiful. And I think it's just, it's very cute to go from room to room in the house and see how they're all different because we're all different. Number four, I let my kids make appropriate messes. Now there are some messes not allowed. Super purposeful, super intentional in the way just to bug me. <laughs> Those are not allowed. When I say appropriate messes, I mean we're doing craft time and someone got glue everywhere or we're playing with play-doh and there's play-doh everywhere. We're outside and they're playing in the dirt. There are appropriate messes that my kids make that I'm not gonna stop them from doing. I think over time, and as I watch my kids, I see it, they learn to make less of a mess, but they kinda gotta make a mess before they get to that point. I'm also, I'm a clean freak. I'm a clean freak. I like having things very clean and very orderly, uh, but when it comes to my kids like doing stuff and playing, I don't mind them putting out a ton of toys and a ton of books and getting dirty outside. Like, they're kids and that's what they do, and. As long as I can look at something and go, this will take me less than 10 minutes to clean up, I'm usually fine with it. Next, I let my kids encourage themselves most of the time. I read this great article about how we too often as parents almost over encourage our kids. They actually only do things in reliance of mom and dad are gonna give me encouragement, affirmation, which is okay, but we're not always there and it's, important to instill in your child the ability for them to encourage themselves or to pat themselves on the back. So not, I don't like with every little thing being like, wow, great job, way to go, good for you. I'm an encouraging parent. I like, if I could seriously make like a team for all of my kids, like a cheerleader team, I probably would. Like I love encouraging my kids, but I have learned that overly encouraging them and making them rely on my encouragement to do things isn't actually very healthy or very good. So still giving them encouragement, uh, still giving them affirmations, but also learning when to just be quiet and let them see what they're doing and feel good about what they're doing just from them doing so, not because I'm telling them you're doing great. <laughs> Did any of that make sense? I hope so. Next, I let my kids make food uh, alongside me. I let my kids partake in grocery shopping. I let my kids set the table. I like having my kids very much with food and meals involved. I have certain things like little cutters and tools that the kids can use safely in the kitchen when it comes to preparing food. I love having the kids stand on a chair beside me when I'm making breakfast or lunch or dinner and they can see what I'm doing, they can help out. I also find when they do help out, they're more apt to eat a better dinner because it's kind of like they see the work of their hands, they appreciate it more and therefore they eat better. And helping with grocery shopping, just taking things, putting it into the cart, setting the table, that it's just good responsibilities. And I find when it comes to like meal time, the kitchen, the dining room, that really is our family room to us. That's the room that the family is in most of the day and to have the kids really active in that area, I think it's important. I think it's really fun. They like it, I like it. Sometimes it's more work for me, sometimes it's less work for me. I'm just trying to find my clasp. Oh, okay, it's on the back of my neck, sweet. But I really enjoy that. I really enjoy just letting the kids take charge and set the table, prepare meals with me. It's special. And that's what I grew up with uh, as a kid. And I wanted to give that to my own kids too. Yeah, I think responsibility in a lot of ways really does start in the kitchen. I, that's just how I feel. Okay, a couple more. Number seven, I let my kids get bored. Kids that never get bored are usually overstimulated. They don't have the ability to give their brains some downtime because it's just like, go, go, go. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening. And I think our kids being bored just creates really great 
kids and good thinkers and great minds. Overstimulated kids can really struggle with thinking for themselves and problem solving. Kids that get bored are great with problem solving. They're great with independence. They're great at self-entertaining themselves. Kids that get bored and know what to do from that boredom are awesome kids. And I really wanna set my kids up to be like that. So instead of seeing your kid be bored or not knowing what to do and just being like, I'm gonna turn on a show. I'm going to press all these buttons on my phone and you can play with it. Actually let them be bored and see what they do. I find that when I do this, my kids do really cool things. There's nothing wrong with letting your kids get bored. And I always get questions. How do you get your kids to entertain themselves? I have a whole video on that and I can link it down below but a huge part of it is just letting them be bored because they have to take the initiative and go ahead to either be not bored or just kind of sit in their boredom and let their brains like go to town. It's, it's super cool. Okay, this is my last one. I let my kids sort out their disputes amongst each other, usually, not all the time. A lot of the time, me or Kieran, or Kieran and I, have to go ahead and interject or help things out of it. But I have been, and this is just like the past six months, I have been letting the kids settle their disputes more. He took my toy, she pulled my hair. Instead of them having me and Kieran come in and be like, what's going on? Like referees, which we're parents, we're, we're kind of referees. <laughs> letting them have good conversation. Like I have a two and a three year old, okay? Sometimes they settle their disputes really well. So don't think that your kid is too young to settle a dispute with another kid. You, you just gotta kind of train them. But instead of hopping in and being like, I'm gonna fix this, uh, get your kids to fix it. Get them to figure out what was the issue. Get them to voice how they're feeling. I'm working on this like crazy with my kids to try to get them to tell each other how they're feeling. This is how I'm feeling. Please stop, I don't like that. Whenever. You you do this this is how I feel like I'm really trying to get my kids to talk to each other about how they feel so far we're getting somewhere but I love letting the kids handle a lot of their own disputes I do over here because it's still important for me to parent them and guide them but I have been shocked sometimes at how they will settle things ask forgiveness say sorry and then continue on it's beautiful it's so beautiful Anyway, you guys, that is it. That is my things I let my kids do video. <laughs> Again, we're all different parents and I think we can just learn a lot from each other. So I hope maybe you learned a little bit of something from today's video. If you want me to learn something, maybe something you let your kids do that not every single parent does, uh, put it in a comment down below. I'd love to read it and learn from it and just check it out. So thank you for watching. I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.